Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss a, a bit of a Brexit spat on GB News between Jacob Rees-Mogg and Ben Habib over what what's in their own interest. So, I mean, the last day or two really has seen some quite interesting developments from the Conservative side. There was this spat between GB News Brexit bros, Rees-Mogg and Habib. Then Jeremy Hunt gives a speech earlier today in which the entire point was to talk about Labour because he's got nothing to say about his own party. But in this video, I want to talk about that battle of the Brexit bros. Jeremy Hunt can wait till tomorrow, maybe in the stream or something. But Jacob Rees-Mogg has been trying to push a message this week. He said, and I quote, if the parties remain separate, this could hand victory to Labour on a plate. Now, the parties he's referring to are the Conservative Party and Reform UK. In reality, Reform UK, if they stand, are inevitably going to cost the Conservatives extra seats. And it may well make the difference between the Tories being the official party of opposition and that being the Lib Dems. But it is not the difference between a majority Labour government and not. Too far gone. Try to suggest such a thing to a serious polling analyst and they will either laugh or scowl, but they will not agree. In addition, Reform UK are not actually as big a threat as many Conservative MPs think. And wouldn't be a threat at all if they hadn't enabled them with their asylum nonsense and other associated culture wars. But in the here and now, you can understand Jacob Rees-Mogg wanting to appeal for a deal, a union of the Conservatives and Reform UK. It would be a win-win situation for him because first, Rees-Mogg wants the Conservative Party to basically become Reform UK anyway, adopt the same policies. So of course he would welcome any movement from his own party to make themselves more palatable to Reform UK. He has done as much as anyone to try and drag the Conservative Party to the far right over the years. Second, whether or not the Conservatives can be dragged further to the crazy end of the political spectrum before the election, Rhys Mogg would rather he was able to remain an MP and that he <laughs> he's not going to do that if, um, if, if Reform UK are snapping his heels. He's already slated to lose his seat. It already looks likely from the polls, or at least there's a good chance he'll lose his seat. And even if he does want his seat, he sort of wants a lot of other Tory MPs to sit, win their seats as well. Otherwise, he'd have to be stuck at the back, sat with the DUP. As such... He doesn't want to face the prospect of Reform UK nicking loads of Conservative votes across the country in this coming election. So, of course, he's going to be pushing for an agreement. Problem is, nobody else really wants it. Ben Habib of Reform UK certainly doesn't want it. He said to Moggit, look, you may be me Brexit, bro, but you is tripping if you think we're going to stand aside, bruv. I think that's what he said. I wasn't really paying attention. But the point he was making was that he agrees with Rhys Mogg and a number of others in the Conservative Party on policy. But he said, I mean, he said they're not even right with policy. They were just common sense. That word, that term has been used too much now. I think the term common sense is going to die out. Maybe it should die out. It's never used well. Um, but if these lunatics keep using it to when they mean extremist rubbish, then yeah, best rest of us best not use it at all. But Habib said that the Conservative Party doesn't do what it promises. Now, this is where the Conservatives have got a problem that they're just not facing up to. Yesterday, they struggled to attack Labour's six first steps. That is because they know they're popular with swing voters. Of course they are. Labour have spent a long time researching their target voters. They've been putting towards them all sorts of things, seeing which ones work best, these are the ones that were shiniest as a result of that research. And they're now promoting them on vans going around the country and this card thing that will presumably be making its way into letterboxes over the summer. So the Conservatives had to adopt a strategy instead of saying, oh, yeah, Labour won't actually carry them out, though. Now, maybe they will persuade some people of that, maybe not. But the Conservatives have proven themselves to be unreliable with promises. Where are the new hospitals? Not a single one has been built and we're now told that we're unlikely to see a single one being built even by 2030. Not that Habib cares about hospitals, he's mostly about the immigration. But the Conservatives have broken those promises as well. In this case, because their ideology is incompatible with reality. And although not many senior politicians are saying it, Brexit promises have not been kept either. 
at the front of the 2019 Conservative Party manifesto, basically, not the front cover, but the first page, Boris Johnson printed what he was basically saying were his keynote promises. These were the ones that were going to be, it's like, judge us on these ones. Never mind the rest of the manifesto. These are the ones, which is good. It saves us going through the whole manifesto. Um, these are the ones the Conservatives themselves decided to shine a spotlight on. So we go through them. 50,000 more nurses, 50 million more GP appointments. No, no, things are worse. Tougher sentencing for criminals. We're releasing prisoners months early because we've run out of prison space. New immigration system to control immigration. Record immigration numbers. More investment in education. Education is on its arse. This is why one of Labour's keynote promises is thousands more teachers. Controlling debt. Good one. Reaching net zero by 2050. Well, now we've got Tory MPs. It's not just that they've, they've pulled back on these commitments. You've got Tory MPs openly attacking the idea of net zero. Openly attacking one of the keynote policies on which they were elected. Final one, not raise the rate of income tax, VOT or national insurance. Now, technically not, I don't think. However, everyone knows that the overall rate of tax is at record high and is set to go higher for the next few years. So although you can say, oh, we didn't raise national insurance, VAT or, or income tax, it's like, well, you did. You didn't raise the rate of it as such, but you, with fiscal drag, you have raised income tax at least. And in terms of the others, I mean, what was the point of the promise so that people wouldn't have to pay more tax, but people are made pay more tax. You've just sneaked it in in other areas. And, and so it's quite impressive, really. Literally every one of the promises that they personally picked out as their main offers, broken. I mean, you expect the odd promise maybe to fall by the wayside if there's like a big emergency or other changes circumstances. And we have had big emergencies. We've had COVID, war in Europe. Sure, and, and those things weren't directly the Tories' fault. The way we've managed them, you know, the particularly COVID, yeah. But the fact that they happen themselves, not the Tories' fault. But it's quite impressive to fail on every single one of your main platform promises. Like every single one. And Habib also gave a warning to the Conservatives that they ought to take note of as well. Once he'd finished banging on about how his mad ideas were actually just basic Conservative centre-right policies, that's what he said, he moved on to Brexit. He said, how can a party serious about Brexit be allowing anyone who backed Remain to stand for the party? Get rid of the one nation lot, he said. And this isn't just mouthing off on GB News for Entertainment. This is what Reform UK want. I talked earlier this week about how the Conservatives, last time they lost power, eventually realised they had an image problem and eventually made themselves more palatable to the public. Now, it was lies, but they at least sounded more reasonable. But then, you know, they had the people to make it plausible. What Reform UK want to do is to get the Conservatives to believe that they can never win again unless Reform UK voluntarily step aside and that Reform UK will only do so if the Conservatives purge themselves of the undesirables. You know, raging Marxists like, you know, um, Theresa May, who's going anyway as it, as it happens, but it will absolutely apply to everyone not firmly on the far right of the party. Because remember, the far right are actually centre-right according to these lunatics, which is why people like Rishi Sunak are considered socialists. They actually call them socialists, Rishi Sunak. And if the Conservatives do that, there will be no realisation that they've got an image problem down the line because they'll have jettisoned everyone who could possibly come to that conclusion. Because extremists never accept their own toxicity, no matter which extreme they're on. They're just too disconnected from ordinary people. So what I would say to these so-called One Nation Conservatives, who've been self-destructively quiet for the best part of a decade now, in the hope that one more bit of appeasement will sort it all out, they have been marked for extermination by Reform UK. They would do well to decide what they want to do about it. Fight or jump ship to the Lib Dems or something. Because whichever it is, they're going to have to have a plan for it. And they are running out of time for it. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.